All right, let's get started. So I'm Jessica Philippe from the South Central Regional Library Council. And before we hear about the Fenimore Art Museum, I'd like to introduce Nicole Laura. She's the School Library System Coordinator and Manager for Classroom Enrichment Resources at Broom Tioga BOCES. And Nicole is going to give a bit of background on this Primary Partners Program Grant and the History Unbound LibGuide. So welcome, Nicole. Great. Thanks, Jessica. So I wanted to take a moment to describe, like Jessica said, the background of the grant, as well as show some of the resources that are available and made possible because of the grant. Um, so Primary Partners is an 18-month Teaching with Primary Sources grant through the Library of Congress. And this is the second iteration of a Teaching with Primary Sources grant that has been received by South Central Regional Library Council. The first um, iteration of this grant was known as History Unbound. And that ran from 2014 to 2015. The aim of the current grant is to facilitate partnerships between social studies teachers, librarians, and cultural organization educators. So what that's looked like in practice is over the past summer, we brought together social studies teachers and school librarians, as well as representatives from local cultural organizations five cultural organizations and 16 social studies and librarian teams all together. Um, we brought them together for a two-day workshop here in Binghamton where I'm located to create many inquiries and to learn about the collections that are available to them both through the local cultural organizations as well as through the Library of Congress. So during those two days, which were facilitated by Jen Hoyer from Brooklyn Connections, um, which is the education arm of the Brooklyn Public Library. The teacher librarian teams, along with some assistance from the um, representatives from our regional, local, cultural organizations, um, wrote many inquiries that integrated the Library of Congress resources that are available, as well as those local primary sources. And since that um, two-day workshop, those teams have been charged with teaching the lessons and then sharing their reflections and student products that came out of teaching those lessons. So in addition to the workshops that were made possible from this grant, there has also been some work around the initial History Unbound LibGuide, updating some of the resources that are available there. So that's what you can see on the screen. Much of this work was done during the first iteration of the grant, but there have been some changes and some revisions and some additional materials added. So on this LibGuide, there are tabs across the top with different time periods. And underneath each of those tabs, you'll find thematic sets of primary sources pulled from all kinds of resources, Digital Public Library of America, New York Heritage, the New York State Archives, the New York Public Library Digital Collections, and the Library of Congress. So if you go into any of these sections, you'll see, mm -hmm, you'll see some primary sources. Once my internet comes back, you'll see some primary sources that have been pulled out um, and collected into those thematic sets to make it really easy for educators to find what they need. So in addition to those individual collections, new to the LibGuide um, as a product of the current grant, we've been able to create resources by grade level. And I'm a little nervous to click this, um, so I'm going to open it in a new tab just in case we have some issues. Okay, it looks like it's working. So there are resources by grade level um, that have been pulled out from those thematic sets. The way that this was created is the social studies framework in New York has a K through 8 collection and then a 9 through 12 collection um, of different content area scaffolding that goes up through K through 8 and then again 9 through 12. Um, within each of these sections, all of the grade levels have been pulled out with the major thematic areas and then links back to the individual resource pages that fit within those themes are linked underneath. So you can see um, there are a few at the elementary level, a significant number at the middle school level, and then a significant number at the high school level, particularly in grade 11, which is really focused on U.S. history. So clicking on any of these links will bring you back to those time period theme sets along with those resources. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Jessica. 
Great. Thanks, Nicole. Um, now I would like to introduce Jen Peter. She is the Special Collections Librarian at the Fenimore Art Museum Research Library in Cooperstown. So thanks for being with us, Jen. All right. There we go. Um, hi. Hello. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Uh, okay, so um, as uh, Jessica said, I'm Jen Peters and one of Special Collections Librarians here at the Fenimore uh, Research Library. And just want to say thanks for tuning in today and uh, we'll go ahead and jump in. So educational outreach that we are currently doing with local schools, um, we're in a unique position here at the library because we have the two museums uh, collaborating with us on developing programming that uses the library collection along with the museum collections. And the two museums being uh, the Fenimore and also the Farmers Museum. Uh, so for example, uh, for the collaboration of programming, some or all of you may be familiar with uh, Museum Quest, wherein groups of students use a map to go around the two museum campuses and visit various learning and activity stations at the museums. Uh, and students learn about objects from the collection through lessons and activities based on New York State learning standards and Common Core standards. And this last year was the first time the library participated as a station. So for our station, we used maps and atlases from the library collection uh, paired with Google Maps uh, to learn more about the basics of how to read a map. And then, everyone's favorite part, so what we found out, was we asked the students to use their map skills uh, to go on a brief scavenger hunt for uh, the treasure in the library. And while we didn't delve deep into map collections here at the library, just simply participating in Museum Quest gave the library an opportunity to begin thinking about uh, the potential for discovery in the collection. And the time spent with the students and the chaperones uh, really gave the library a chance to uh, explore our approach to instruction and the forming of activities and see where we can uh, make improvements from there. And uh, in the past year, we've been working on increasing our outreach opportunities to serve primary, secondary, and higher ed students with instruction and feedback on identifying and using primary sources. And we're really looking to increase our outreach services uh, to support the needs of the students and teachers through offering on-site and off-site visits. On-site visits to the library can be an opportunity to view the collections and guide students and educators research to help support school projects or lessons plans. Um, and also because we realize making a physical visit to the library isn't always a possibility. Uh, we're exploring ways to offer off-site visits to area schools. And an off-site visit might be an opportunity to view and connect uh, digital collections with physical reproductions of collection material uh, in the same envi environment or support discussion on using primary sources. And it also gives us an opportunity if we are on-site or off-site into a school um, to really see what the teachers and the students are working with and get a sense of their environment. Uh, so we're still forming logistics of what this might look like in the future, but it is something to look forward to. And speaking of making connections with the library, uh, schools connect, can connect with us virtually or in person to view collection material or seek guidance on using the collection. If you feel uh, comfortable uh, searching through online catalogs or databases uh, for collection material, you can start with Pathfinder. And Pathfinder is our online catalog of library collection items. And it's a really good place to start if you're hoping to see uh, what collection material we have pertaining to a particular subject area, a person or organization, or a geographic region you're researching. And we're gonna go ahead and go to the page here. Let's see. All right, so you should be able to see the homepage of the Fenimore Art Museum in the collections page. Yep. All right, and we'll go to uh, the library and catalog, library catalog and databases. And I'm showing you this particular navigation because the URL for uh, the Pathfinder homepage isn't the most straightforward at the moment. Um, and it's a lot easier to guide people to go to the Fenimore Museum and the collections page. So 
when you do go to it, um, we definitely recommend uh, bookmarking it. It makes it a lot easier to get to. So there's Pathfinder. And then this is the homepage of Pathfinder. So you can start searches here. You can go into more advanced searches, um, series and acquisitions, uh, general library information, a little bit more about the library and also closures and things like that. Uh, but we also have uh, teaching curriculums and bibliographies. And it's a very short uh, set right now. This is something that we're looking at um, hopefully expanding on in the future. Um, and these two curriculums were made by museum and library staff as well as this bibliography. But like I said, we'd love to expand on this um, to uh, give more resource tools for searching specific topics based on our library collections. And you can also connect with digital collections at other institutions, um, but also our own within New York Heritage. We'll get more into that in a minute. Uh, with some of our collections available for viewing online, uh, visitors to New York Heritage can view digitized textual and photographic objects in our collection. Um, and I'll come back to those in a second. Most important thing I wanted to point out here uh, is if you'd like to use Pathfinder for searching our library catalog, but you're not sure where to start, or if you start and you get stuck, please let us know. We're happy to help guide you in person or over the phone. We're actually pretty good over the phone uh, now guiding through online um, and going into the collection as well. Um, of course, you can, uh, can connect with us in person. Anyone is welcome to visit the library in person to search and view collection material. And if you're not as comfortable searching online for collection material, uh, we can definitely offer suggestions for how and where to begin your search, depending on your research needs. And at the end, um, I'm going to have a slide up that includes the library's contact details as well. All right. We'll go back to the PowerPoint. So now let's get into primary sources at the library. So we're very fortunate to be able to host uh, some of our library collections as digital collections through New York Heritage. Uh, for primary sources available through New York Heritage, I wanted to point out one in particular. Uh, it is the newest collection that has been added to New York Heritage from our library, and it's the Bill the Lockwood Collection. And this collection is a prime example of researching topics of interest as set out by primary partners. Um, the collection touches on several topics, including but not limited to uh, women's suffrage, uh, temperance, equal rights. And we're going to go to that link. Show you. All right. She said should be able to see New York Heritage. Yes. All right. Um, I wanted to show you, uh, these are all separated into different topic areas within the Belva Lockwood collection, but I wanted to show you the new woman. Um, included amongst um, all of these uh, uh, topics are lectures um, from Belva Lockwood and some of them during her campaign for president. Um, the new woman, I wanted to show you specifically, that was the example on the PowerPoint slide. Um, but a few things I wanted to point out here, um, the digitized documents are really great because if you can, if you find that you're struggling with deciphering handwriting, uh, you can view transcriptions of document pages. Um, I don't think we have everything transcribed through all of our collections. I know this collection has quite a bit of transcriptions, if not the whole thing. Uh, and the transcriptions are here. And I also wanted to point out the object description itself and all of these fields here. Um, the ease of access to the listed object descriptions uh, can really help you quickly note pertinent information about the document, um, such as the creator or the date um, of the document, the original date, and also the subject areas included in the content of the document. Uh, this information is very useful to quickly point out um, all the those all the information that you need to create uh, citations, which is very helpful. And the ease of viewing these object descriptions um, is good to point out because we search for this information in a different way when viewing these um, online versus in person. So in person, sometimes it can be a bit of a hunt depending on how well the collection was described when it was processed. And even if that description is available to the researcher, researcher at the time of them researching. So it's nice to like point out to students and helping them understand 
um, how they can search the or search these collections in within these two contexts. All right, go back to PowerPoint. All right, the list of digital collections um, is growing as we continue to catalog and digitize collection material. Um, this is definitely not the only collection we have up on New York Heritage. Um, just one I wanted to point out in particular. Um, but definitely check back in to see what else might be popping up in the future. And of course, these digital collections uh, come from physical collections that we have in the library. So in addition to collections like Belva Lockwood, um, let's take a look at a list of physical collections that may be of interest for those researching women's suffrage, the Erie Canal, and the Civil War. And since I can't take you on a virtual tour of the collections or the library space, I'd still like to show you a few examples of primary sources related to these topics. So for women's suffrage, um, mostly we have pamphlets of speeches and lectures from late 19th and early 20th centuries um, composed by pro and anti-women suffrage figures. And in this one, you can probably guess which one is pro and which one's anti. Um, and these are two separate pamphlets that we have in the collection. And for the Erie Canal, um, we also have pamphlets, but other things too. Um, there are pamphlets from the time in which the canal was a major commerce route, a commercial route, um, account books of business people who actually supplied materials to build the canal, um, which you can see on this image here on the left, uh, published accounts discussing working on the canal, maps of the canal and other waterways in this image on the right, and also personal accounts of traveling on the canal. And then the Civil War. This topic in particular offers a variety of primary source materials to browse and research. It's one of our biggest uh, subject areas. And to only pick a few, there are letters from soldiers uh, and family and friends, enlistment papers, photographs, diaries, maps, uh, collections that are specifically related to uh, regiments uh, in the war. Um, and the left image shows a map pointing out battles taking place in this particular area of Pennsylvania and Maryland. And then the image on the right shows uh, the all clear for this soldier, the soldier being John Kidder. Um, he was declared fit enough to serve as a company officer in the army. And then right next to that is his mustering out role uh, or his discharge from service. And uh, the image on the left is a letter home, again from John Kidder. And the image on the right is the photo of John Kidder. And uh, this soldier that I've mentioned in the last few images really shows to you uh, or gives you an idea as to how deep some of these primary source topics can go here in the library collections. So within the Civil War, there are there's a lot of different primary source materials, but even just down to one specific soldier, um, you can really begin to vet out um, an entire experience of a soldier within a war. And that is it that I have. Um, I want to say thanks for listening and ask if there's any questions. And again, here's the contact details for the library. Thanks, Jen. Yeah.